Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you this morning as we gather worship on the second Sunday of Christmas, known even better as the first Sunday of the new year 2021. And we're glad that you're here with us this morning as we come together. Remind you of uh, uh, announcements for this week very quickly. They're in the bulletin. Uh, if you can go online, if you're looking at Facebook and see that bulletin, uh, but very quickly remind you of them. First of all, we have an address where you can send cards, as Natalie will be at Charlottesville starting tomorrow. Uh, there's, that address is in our bulletin. Uh, send a card, uh, and, and, and I'm sure she'll appreciate hearing from you. Uh, she'll need those as she goes through that period of time and as we send those out. Also, uh, remind you that on, on Wednesday, it is Epiphany of the Lord Day. Uh, that will be the end of the Christmas season. We have been through our 12 days of Christmas, and we will come to Epiphany on that day. On Thursday, the church office will be open. And then on Saturday at 9 a.m., begin the removal of the greens and the Christmas decorations as part of, we had hanging of the greens. I guess you could call this the de-hanging of the greens as you come and help take apart what has been put up for the Christmas season. And then next Sunday is a very, very busy Sunday. Uh, we have our service of communion next Sunday and the baptism of the Lord Sunday. Uh, we also have our ordination, installation of the new elders in our church next Sunday. And then at 12 o'clock next Sunday is our session meeting, which will be virtual and in-person both um, uh, here uh, at the church next Sunday at noon. I want to remind you, if you had purchased a poinsettia and you're interested in taking that home, they've been beautiful in our sanctuary. Uh, you feel free to pick those up today if you would like and take one home with you, or however many you may have purchased, take those and, and get those um, out and take them back as uh, uh, the Christmas season ends. And if you really have a green thumb, you can take them home and try to save them and plant them, and you'll have great red ones next year. But I only know two or three people that ever do that, so you could try. That would be neat to see. Also, uh, remind you that the offering boxes are available at this time for the new year. They're out in the, in the foyer. Uh, look for your box with your name on it there. If, you, uh, if not, you can have one sent to you also. But be aware of those out in the, in the foyers you've come in uh, today. This is a special Sunday. I, I, I almost forget every year, every, every month. But this is Sensibility Sunday. Be aware of that as we take our Sensibility offering today. As you depart from the church, you drop your coins in one of the boxes as you, or one of the uh, jugs as you depart. This is our special offering done for local missions and local projects here within our community. Also, these days are in the devotional book. If you pick those up, they're out in the foyer. Uh, pick one up as you depart. Uh, this is a really great devotional book, and I would encourage you to get it. It's for uh, January, February, March, the first quarter. Uh, get a chance, pick up that quarterly. If you know some people that read it, pick it up and take it to them. Uh, it is indeed a, a wonderful little book to, to, to uh, have each day with your daily devotion. Uh, the newsletters will arrive this week. I'm almost finished with those. I'm slow, but I'm getting there. Um, look for them. Um, and if you do not receive one this week, uh, let us know that you didn't receive one to make sure we have your address right and all of that kind of uh, stuff, as we'll be sending those out uh, probably uh, middle of the week. We are glad that you're here today as we gather to worship. This is indeed a uh, rainy day outside, but the, the good news is it could be ice outside or it could be snow outside. And I'm not this fond of snow, but I'd rather have a little bit of rain than I would snow or ice at this point, I think. Uh, as we gather. Listen today as our introit is Good Christian Friends Rejoice, uh, led by not only our, our soloists today for our songs, but also our liturgists today. Listen as Jim Miller comes and shares with us on this Sunday. Jesus Christ is born today. Hearts and ask before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ 
Christ is born today. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door, and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born to this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave, Jesus Christ was born to save. Cause you one and cause you all to gain the everlasting hall. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Uh, please stand for the call to worship. Come, hear the Christmas news. Jesus Christ is born. Come, sing the Christmas story. Jesus Christ is born. Come, worship the Christmas child. Jesus Christ is born. Let us worship God. You may be seated while I sing the first Noel. Three wise men 
came from country far to seek for a king was their intent and to follow the star wherever it went no rise for the call to confession. Like a great light in a land of deep darkness, the mercy of the Lord shines upon us. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. A moment of silent confession. Please pray together. O oh, Holy One, forgive us when we fail to live in the good news of your Christmas story. When we hear the choir sing, rejoice, but we do not join their chorus. When we know the angels say, do not fear, yet fear is all we can muster. When we see a star rising in the east, but we turn away from its light. Forgive us, O oh Lord, of the sins of our lives and the sins of the systems we fail to disrupt. Convict us with the cry of a child from a manger and free us to try again. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hear the promise of the Lord. See, your salvation has come. You are a holy people redeemed by God, sought out, not forsaken. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Gracious God, by the gift of your Holy Spirit, show us the word made flesh. Good news of great joy for all, so that we may sing with the angels, glory in the highest and peace on earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Treasure these words and ponder them in your heart. The scripture lesson today is from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, 
and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart and who has made him known. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Julie. Light into the new year. What a year it has been, 2020. Someone sent me a little meme, and I'm not good at those things, but I thought it was kind of cute. I tried to claim it as my own and sent it to a few other people. He said to me, 2020 is coming and going, and 2021 is coming, and now it is 21 and able to drink. What kind of year will it be? And that's kind of a scary thought to think about. Uh, Then my sister sent it back to me when I sent her that, and she said, 21 is coming, and it should be responsible. So I hope that's what it means. 2021 is a responsible year. What a year it has been. January last year, We gathered with some excitement. We celebrated that month, the Christian Unity Sunday with the Reverend Jeff Allen of the West Virginia Council of Churches coming and sharing in our pulpit and sharing with us our connection to churches all over West Virginia. 
We participated in the Martin Luther King Jr. celebration in Lewisburg and what a celebration it was as we walked from the courthouse to the to the uh, Lewisburg United Methodist, Church, United Methodist Church. We had wonderful speakers speak and a great sharing of folks with a meal and fellowship. February rolled around and we had a fabulous celebration on the 14th of February as we adopted of our church as a Matthew 25 church, one of the first in West Virginia to do so. Ash Wednesday arrived in February. The Reverend Ed Thompson celebrated communion with us as he came uh, there toward the end of February on Trinity Sunday, I believe that's what it was, uh, to celebrate with us communion and celebrate the church with us. And we started our Lenten Bible study in February. Then March came, the start of Lent, the World Day of Prayer at the Episcopal Church in Lewisburg. But then on March 22, the church went into its COVID-19 mode. We stopped having after church fellowships. We stopped doing things we had been doing. We stopped having service the way we've had them and we have not been the same since that happened. In April, we canceled all in-person services. Maundy Thursday was canceled in our celebration of that. Good Friday, Easter sunrise and Easter itself were done on Facebook Live. There was no breakfast, there were no lunches, no fellowship. In May, we canceled services for Mother's Day. But on Pentecost, we came back to church as we celebrated communion and celebrated Pentecost in a very different kind of fashion, but a celebration nevertheless. In June, it was Trinity Sunday, primary election day, a private graveside service for the family of Melvin Balsic, who had left us at the beginning of this pandemic. A decision was made not to have services in the park for the summer because of the pandemic. In July, the 4th of July came through as it always does, but there weren't a lot of celebrations, no big event in Alderson, no big event around town. But we started our Vespers in the park, something new for us on a Wednesday night. Stephen Baldwin was our first speaker as he came up and shared with us a time as we drove in and we could sing songs which we hadn't been singing in church. There was also a memorial service that month for Steve Malcolm, who passed away from our church. In August, always in August, we're busy because of state fair. There was no state fair. We did have a Matthew 25 project as we had a community clothing closet out in our parking lot as everybody socially distanced and wore masks. But it was an unusual event as people came in to get their things. And we had our second Vespers in the park. On a Wednesday night, Lisa Lotta Heil came and played her fiddle for us and we listened to music as the sun set and it was a gorgeous, gorgeous evening. September rolled around, Labor Day, unusual for us. The start of the season of peace in our church and our last Vespers in the park where we focused on peace. And then October, World Communion Sunday, celebrated differently than we normally do. Peace and Global Witness Offering. Start of our Sunday school that month for our children, which didn't go long because of the changes in the map, but we started. We had local cluster meetings of the Presbyterian churches here at Clifton as we talked about the future. And for the first time, the Matthew 25 churches in West Virginia, three of them, met online to share with each other what we were going to be doing. And we went through Reformation Day in October. In November, what a busy beginning. All Saints Day where we honored the memory of Melvin Bostick, Steve Malcolm, Carolyn Arbuckle, and Hale Arbuckle. Where we had a baby dedication of Bo Asher Bird, the son of Raylan and Barrett Bird. Where we had our annual church business meeting. The business to be conducted as we elected uh, elders, Heather Blake, Teresa Bostick, Heather Gillen. Uh, Susie Meadows and Shannon Warren, our board of trustees, Jim King was nominated and put on that. Our nominating committee, Buddy Baker, Lynn Balstick, Larry Davis, Donna Nichol, and Alice Rawl. A very busy, busy day. The general election came and went. Another Matthew 25 prayer event as we developed with other churches in the state and we had a time of prayer with each other. Our Seeker Sunday School class started back in November with Zoom. But there was no Thanksgiving dinner at the church. 
we celebrated Thanksgiving differently. Hanging the greens was different, even though they were hung. And we started the first Sunday of Advent. In December, just this last month, what seemed sometimes like years ago, we had our pandemic parable story from the Matthew 25 group. We had our Christmas Eve services, which uh, Nima about to pull his hair out over trying to put all that together as we tried to tape that and get it on the air in an elaborate sort of way. We heard beautiful music and beautiful reading and sharing. And we had the end of the year loss of Helen Fleming right at the end of the year. Now it's 2021. Welcome to this first Sunday of a new year. I will tell you, it has been a dark past year. But today I want us to think of the light that has come into the new year. Think about, surely there will be problems, difficulties, but there is light. Did you stay up Thursday night to watch the ball drop in New York City to the empty streets of people standing out on Times Square? Cindy and I did. It was a bit surreal, wasn't it? For us, no one else was present but Cindy and myself. We just sat there, probably both of us half asleep, half awake, and wondered what the year would hold. My neighbors did set off some fireworks, but I have to say in this day and time, you pondered, were they dissing themselves properly? Were they safe? Not in blowing themselves up, but were they safe away from each other? I know they were, but still made one think and ponder. Different than in many years. And that brings us to today's passage that Jim read. One of the striking features of the Gospel of John is the way it depicts the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. The other Gospels usually tell us stories about Jesus. Then, like his disciples, we're left to ask, who is this and what is this about? And why do the winds and the seas obey him? Who is it that feeds the multitude with a few loaves and a few fishes? But in the Gospel of John, there's never a doubt who Jesus is because he tells us. Usually he does so with a statement that begins with the words, I am. Put him in a situation, he will clarify who he is and what he's come to do. You put him in the desert, surrounded by people who are chronically unsatisfied and people who are angry. And Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You put him in the midst of people who are confused and Jesus says, when they say, who are you? Jesus says, when they say, what difference do you make? Jesus says, when they fuss and complain, Jesus says, I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. It's an act of self-definition. You put him at a graveside in the midst of grief, broken, stricken people. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. Or put him in the midst of people who feel disconnected by life's difficulties, kind of like we feel today. And Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. In the Gospel of John, in one situation after another, Jesus defines himself and says, this is who I am. In the eighth chapter, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And his words echo the opening words of the fourth gospel. When I was in seminary, I had to learn in Greek to read that in Greek and give it to the professor. And I found the easiest way for me to do that was just simply to memorize all those words because I wasn't going to learn it in Greek very well. I'm not a great language person. But, but the words are so important. What has come in him is life and life and light to all people. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Jesus says, I am the light. I am the light of the world. This is the kind of thing we might expect to hear in the Christmas season. The second Sunday of Christmas, we were reminded the prophet Isaiah said, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. I don't know if old Isaiah actually knew what he was talking about when we celebrate Christmas in a festival of lights. But we like that light of the season. You know, we string up twinkle lights on pine trees. We take lights and put all over our houses. We burn candles in our windows. 
We plug in those big old GE bulbs so they can hang on our shrubs and burn and burn up lots and lots of electricity. We drive through fairground displays of lights. Uh, we burn up kilowatts because Jesus Christ is born. We sang a song early on that some find pretty distressing. I love, in the bleak midwinter, why not shine a little light in the bleakness of winter? The light that is Christ. What can it mean for Jesus to say, I am the light of the world? Elsewhere, Jesus turns to the church and says, uh, in Matthew and other places, you are the light of the world. And of course, that's where we get our Matthew 25 direction when Jesus tells us that we are lights of the world. Jesus says, you do good things. All of you are thousands of points of light, to quote a politician from past. You're thousand points of light and, and you're to be seen and do good things. Don't hide it under a bushel. But John is different. John's gospel, Jesus never says, you are light. He says, I am the light. What does he mean? Now you can learn a lot about light. I love to read about light. I don't always understand it. You know, uh, those of you who are scientifically minded will know this, that light is the ultimate constant we understand in the universe. It is the one thing that's always constant. Uh, its speed is 186,000 uh, miles per second. Light transmits energy, it transmits radiation and information. We can study light and we can study the aura of lights and study our, our universe. You put a sunbeam through a prism, for me, it was just pretty colors, but it tells you what's in that light. It breaks it down. And physics can tell you lots of things about light. But there's one thing it can't explain. What do we exactly mean by the word light? What is it? We know it when we see it, but can we really explain what it is? Unlike space or time, light cannot be defined over against anything else. Light simply exists. What does it mean for Jesus to say, I am the light of the world? Think about that in that constant. Whatever it means, there is an important concept in the Gospel of John. Two different times the writer depicts Jesus as saying, I am the light. On many occasions, the writer affirms that the coming of Jesus into our world is not merely a light shining, and I like this concept, but it's a light breaking into the darkness. It's, a, it's as if creation is happening all over again when the light of Jesus shines. The writer says all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. Look around a dark world and you may see it. The creator of heaven and earth has come to visit his creation. Read the face of nature and it becomes obvious how Christ is that light. See the snowflakes that fell so beautifully Christmas Eve. Look at the shadowy clouds that came through in the last few days as the rains moved through. Look at, look at the uh, animals around us. I, I, I have to tell you, I get pleasure out of watching my chickens. Now, a lot of people don't get pleasure out of chickens. I just get pleasure out of watching those creatures as they, they run around and they scratch around. And, and I'm like the Pied Piper of Carroll Hill. When I go to the mailbox, they all follow me down the mailbox and they all follow me back. It's just like they're trained to follow me wherever I go. Think about the joy of that light. Watch the fish this spring as they jump in the ponds and the, and the streams and the rivers. All things came into being through him. What has come into being was life. And the life was the light of all people, we're told in John. That's it. Jesus of Nazareth, the very primal energy of the Creator, is breaking anew, not only in creation, but in all of God's creatures. All of us were created in Christ Jesus. All of us are recreated in Christ Jesus. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. I need that light this year. I need that light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And we may not be able to explain it completely. But we know it when we see it. All, at, at Christmas, we know that the light is a new beginning of a new birth, for Christ the Savior is born. And to all who received him, who believe in his name, he gives power to become children of God, we're told. Children reborn, not through human means, he says, but through the bright, shining grace of God. In that sense, Jesus is the light of the world. Light and life to all he brings. That's the promises for all who believe and embrace it. And yet I have to tell you this. 
If Jesus is the light of the world, his light comes into our darkness. And while we don't like being in the dark when it hurts us, let's admit it. Sometimes we don't want anybody to turn on the lights. There are deeds done in darkness that we don't want anybody to see. The coming of light means everything is exposed. Light means we have to deal with the truth. And that can be painful. You know, one of the reasons we use a lot of candlelight when you come to our house to have dinner with us is we don't want you to see the dirt in the corners. You can't see it when there's no light shining. It's dark. Same way with our life. Sometimes we don't want to deal with the truth in our darkness. I read a story of a priest in a Midwestern city who wanted to help some inner city children. He wanted them to see something more than their own situations, their own grime and their own despair. And he put them on a bus and he took them to see some great things of beauty. They went to an art museum and they saw paintings by the masters. They went to a symphony matinee and they heard beautiful music played, just filled their ears these kids had never seen before. Uh, they went through places where architects had designed beautiful homes and people lived. He showed them the best and the brightest things he knew. They climbed back on the bus and went home. That night, one of the young boys set his apartment house on fire. They rescued the neighbors and the family, but the place burned down. The priest was in tears when he went to see the boy in his detention cell. And he said, why did you do it? And he said, you know, I saw all of those beautiful things. And then I came home and saw how ugly my world was. And I hated the ugliness. So I wanted to burn it down. When you shine light in some dark places, there's no telling what may happen. When all you have ever seen is darkness. When that's all you ever know. When light comes, it makes for contrast. Darkness sometimes remains a choice. In fact, it is po it's possible for light to come into the world and for somebody to say, turn out the lights. It's easy for us to have the, the philosophy, the philosophy of the wonderful hee haw he philosophy. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. And if it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all used to be my theme song to people. Pretty dark. We like the lights out. It is possible for the light to shine and for people to say we don't want to see it. As someone once put it, which I think is very apt, they said, what is it to live in such darkness? We deceive ourselves if we think of primitive people in the dark remote areas of the world still without digital watches and microwave ovens. We deceive ourselves if we think only of derelicts crawling along the dark alleyways of our cities. It is also darkness to refuse to hear the truth and to tolerate no teacher or preacher or politician who tells it. It is to avoid certain sections of town as not to be disturbed by the conditions in which some have to live. It's to avoid any book or any speaker who shatters my illusions of innocence in this evil world. It's not to ask the question at work, at home, or at church, because I prefer to let sleeping dogs lie. It is to persuade myself that problems in the schools, in the neighborhood, in society at large are really none of my business. That truly is darkness. That truly is darkness. We know that darkness sometimes very intimately. This is the crisis of the world, says the Gospel of John. Light has come. It's broken through. And people love darkness rather than light. And yet, the light of the world has come. And it is Jesus. Not just any light, but the light of the one who says, here is grace and here is truth. The one who reveals to us of who we are and who we are not. The one who shines forth the grace of God and gives us life and gives us hope and gives us rebirth. His truth is a light that exposes and reveals. But his grace is a light that renews as well as revealing, exposes and also forgives. His light is more than a candle in the night. The light of the world is Jesus, 
our Savior. I am the light of the world, says Jesus. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And the church affirms it. The light shines in the darkness, and no darkness shall overcome it. My friends, as we come into 2021, with darkness we know, with darkness we have had, with uncertainty we cannot even comprehend. One thing to add today is because of Jesus the light, do not be afraid. We may be and we may stumble, but do not be afraid. Let's walk in the light. Wonderful, wonderful light. Light that shines the way and shows us what we can be. Let's be a people who've come through a dark time and say there may be more darkness, but we know, we know the light of the world is in charge. Our Christ is there. Let's walk in the light. Let's pray. Hear us now, Lord, I pray. Help us to seek to be light walkers. Help us to be people who know you shine the way. We may not like what we see sometimes. You show us things about ourselves we just assume not see. Just certainly not see. But yet you show us. And you show us what we can be as you forgive us. And you love us where we are, who we are, and how we are. And you shine the light that we may see tomorrow. May not understand the light, may not understand tomorrow, may not understand the darkness that's ahead, but we know our hope is in you. Hear us this day, Lord, we pray. In the powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us stand together, please, and do our affirmation of faith this day. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and set it on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This morning we want to remember in our prayer concerns those in our church. We think of the Fleming family, the Meadows family, and the loss of a wife and a, and a mother uh, and a grandmother and, and such with that, and a good friend of our church. Uh, Helen was so active here, and we do think of that family this day. Uh, we think of Natalie as she gets ready to go tomorrow. She will start Tuesday uh, in UVA, and we think of her as she goes. I said before, there's an address there. Make sure you send her a card and, and, and keep up uh, letting her know that as she goes through some darkness of treatment, that there's a lot of light going that way too, a lot of hope through Christ that we share with her. We want to keep Sue in our prayers as she continues to go through her treatments and, and the difficulties of her treatments. Be in prayer for Bedford and, and, and his whole family as there's been sickness there. Uh, be in prayer for the Quick family. Uh, many of you knew Wayne who worked at the hospital who passed away. Uh, keep those families in our prayer. Uh, those who've had COVID, lots of COVID cases uh, in, our, in our community. Uh, my brother's getting ready to head for Florida to work fairs. And I said, now you have to be careful. There's a lot of that down here. Now look at Greenbrier County. We're as high as any place in the nation. So I'm not sure he has to be more careful there than he is here. Think of folks as they're out and about uh, in, this, in this time. Think of the joys of, of this season. There are joys of seeing the light, of sharing with one another, the joys of family and friends, even though sometimes we can't be together. Are there special concerns or prayers today? If not, we are going to do the prayers of intercession today as printed in our bulletin. Uh, if you're at home, when we talk about Emmanuel, God with us, if you would please respond, uh, hear our prayer. As we share this, listen to these wonderful words. There'll be times of silence as we remember those in our midst who are ill and those in our families who are ill and those unable to be here this day. Let us bow for prayer. 
Rejoicing in the gift of Jesus Christ our Savior, we pray for this world that God so loves, saying, Emmanuel, God with us, hear our prayer. With gratitude for your love, we pray for our church and the church universal. May we live this day as your beloved children, rejoicing that we have been adopted by your grace and given every spiritual blessing in you. Emmanuel, God with us, hear our prayer. With gratitude for your love, we pray for the world, its fragileness, its people. Bless our sisters and brothers throughout the earth. May we live, all live at peace with our neighbors, receiving from your hand all that we need. Emmanuel, God with us, hear our prayer. With gratitude for your love, we pray for the many communities where we live and work. Let your word made flesh live among us, full of grace. Bring light to all who cannot raise their eyes to the future. Bring life to all who are weighed down and weary. Emmanuel, God with us, hear our prayer. With gratitude for your love, we pray for loved ones. You know all of them, Lord. Lead them beside quiet streams and along smooth paths that their mourning may be replaced with laughter and their tears with songs of joy. Emmanuel, God with us, hear our prayer. Holy One, as you have come to dwell among us, show us how to live as your faithful people, sharing the good news of your grace with all. Through Christ, your word made flesh. Now help us, Lord, as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As usual, our offering today will be taking place in our seats. At the end of the service, there will be a person who will collect that uh, each Sunday. Also remind you as you depart today that there are plastic jugs at both doors. As you depart, uh, certainly maintaining your distance. Uh, drop your coins and other such things you're offering in that sensibility offering, which is very important in our mission locally to what we do. Let us listen as Julie plays the doxology. You can remain seated while she plays this, and then let us have our prayer after that. Let us pray or listen, please. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have of giving our tithes and offerings and help us as a church as we give of our mission gifts as we reach into our community. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. As part of our Christmas season, one of those hymns, As with Gladness, Men of Old. Listen as Jim comes and shares with us this special sending hymn today. Seek my mercy. 
The loving kindness of the Lord our God, the grace of Jesus Christ our Savior, and the renewing power of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Alleluia. Go and tell this good news of great joy. To us a Savior is born. Amen.